The Average Camper's Adventures. Welcome back to The Average Camper's Adventures. Today we want to talk about RV products we can't live without. Flashlights. They're a must for all sorts of situations, whether it's traversing to the shower at night in the campground or you're stopped at an, uh, a truck stop. truck stop and you need to see something or that multi-uses for flashlights. I often use a flashlight because there might be something I want to get outside in the storage containers and I don't know why but typically I have to get something at night so I grab the flashlight but also for any maintenance uh, that has to be done the flashlight comes in handy in those situations. There's just so many reasons to have a flashlight with you when you're in your RV. The next one is surge protectors and we actually have two surge protectors. One of them is built into our coach and one we bought separately. The one that we bought separately gives us a little more information as far as um, the electricity being clean and it being enough to run the coach. So, so recently we were at a park and I hooked up to 50 amps and it caused our um, surge protector to stop because there was some kind of fault in the 50 amp line and so I switched it to a 30 amp and it worked just fine. So having a surge protector that can detect the quality of the power coming into your coach is so important, but most of all, it will protect all of your electronics within the coach in the event of a power surge, lightning strike, or anything like that. So the cost of that is so small compared to trying to replace all of your electrical appliances in the event of some type of catastrophe associated with, uh, again, a power surge or electrical strike or a, a lightning strike. And we actually had that happen when we were in the pop-up in Louisiana. We were camping at the state park in Louisiana and there was a storm that came through and knocked out everything. Yep, knocked out everything. So, RV GPS. Well, you may have an awesome navigator. Like, like me. <laughs> but even I need some additional assistance when we're navigating in areas or I don't even know where we're at. I can go with my gut instinct, but that doesn't always take me right where we want to go. Our RV specific navigation, GPS navigation, gives us information when we're on the road that's above and beyond a typical GPS. We can plug in the height of our coach and the length of our coach and it will help us to plan routes that either divert us from low bridges or even some, in some cases turns, sharp turns that our coach cannot make around. And what I mean is that in certain areas there are mountains that are cut out to make the road and in some cases when you make sharp turns your coach could be too long to make that turn. So this is a, a, a great thing to have. It keeps us um, on roads that are RV friendly, for the most part, we've, uh, had, a, we've had, had a few situations, <laughs> but for the most part it keeps us on roads that are RV friendly for our size of coach, and it is so important to be able to have that information at your fingertips. You can program it to say that you don't want to go on toll roads, or toll roads are acceptable, or ferries, or not ferries. There's so many options that it provides when you're traveling, much less the next gas stations or you know you can get the turkey call when the cracker barrels are coming in three miles or uh, and it'll set you can set it and program it for the distance you want to be made aware of uh, your next turn or if you're in a city you know this lane goes this way this lane goes that way you know having that information available early enough is very valuable for us mm -hmm. the other thing that it provides is information um, related to campgrounds. It, it not only gives um, or has the campgrounds, many campgrounds programmed into the system, but it gives information like telephone numbers and um, associated information that you might need while you're trying to plan your trip. 
or maybe you just want to make a quick stop and you're looking for the closest campground, this thing works really well to do that. Today's world requires a lot of availability to cellular information, internet, and Wi-Fi, and so you, if you're hooked up to any of these, you need the little thing. Yes, it's called a jetpack, and it's through Verizon, and it's a uh, wireless internet connection through cellular data. It, it allows us to, to connect multiple devices to the unit, and it's a fantastic um, device that gives a lot of flexibility. Now, there's many plans out there, and you just choose the one that's right for you. We uh, purchased the jetpack and then a signal booster to help us get a stronger signal um, for our internet. And there's just so many uses for that while you're on the road. It's, I don't have to explain all the uses of the internet itself, but um, for us, our GPS, that's a RV GPS, also has a Wi-Fi connection that we can connect through the jetpack, and it will give us um, weather information as we're, as we're going down the road. So if there is a storm ahead of us, it can reroute us around that storm, or you know, when you're going through Oklahoma and the winds are 50 miles an hour, <laughs> yeah. you can at least get a heads up before you get there. Yeah, so the combination of, you know, the RV GPS and uh, jetpack, and then we have things like iPhones, iPads, and so forth to, to stay connected um, through social media or just with family, maybe business reasons. But it's a, it's a, wonderful, it's a wonderful way to, um, to stay connected to the Internet. Now, of course, you have to have the availability, and we have been a couple places where we still didn't have any service at all. Yeah, some of the some of the um, recommendations is to is to actually have two services, um, AT and T and Verizon. Um, I've heard in many places that that's a nice combination. We just have Verizon. We're not using it all the time at this point. So where we've gone, we've had pretty good connection with the exception of a few places high in the mountains um, where, we've, where we just have not had a connection. So the only way you could be connected in those situations is through a satellite internet connection and we just uh, haven't gone that route. Mm -hmm. The next one is a backup heat source. We have run into situations where we had problems with our propane and it was really valuable to have a backup heat source such as a propane heater, catalytic heater, something like that that electric you can run. Blanket. Electric blankets, yeah. Just some kind of backup heat source um, that you can have in the event of a problem. Also, if you're if you're camping in very cold situations, which we really haven't done, I think maybe Florida. 29 degrees was as low as we've been at this point. And but, that's with our pop-up, I think. Um, in, Georgia. Oh, in Georgia, in Georgia, yeah, we we got down to about 29 or less somewhere in there. But um, having that backup heat source just really helps um, to keep the coach warm in extreme cold situations. Now the propane heater works wonderfully, and uh, um, no problem. But you can, can you imagine if you had uh, 29 degrees or less, or even just zero degrees, and you either ran out of propane or you had a problem with your propane heater not working, then you might be in trouble. So having some kind of a backup heat source would be really valuable. Isn't there a thing that we could only use our heat for, to a certain degree and then it won't heat anymore? Right, we have an electric heat pump that would only work down to a certain temperature and then we'd have to switch over to the propane. So, you know, um, again, in the case that we had, uh, in Georgia, we had the electric heat running, and then we went to go turn on the propane. It did not work, oh, so yeah. at least we had the backup of the uh, catalytic heater to be able to, or electric heater to be able to continue heating the coach while we tried to figure out the propane problem. Right. Okay. So it's always nice to have a backup. The tire pressure monitor. Ooh, we learned something new today. Mm -hmm. Our tires were low. <laughs> <laughs> we finally got our tire pressure monitor hooked up and working, and uh, we found out that our tires were a little low, based even on we the just recommendation. Had it for service. Yeah, even though we had it for service, I think uh, 
we took for granted that those things would be checked, but uh, didn't didn't really work out that way. So having a tire pressure monitoring system, I think, is uh, self-explanatory. Knowing the pressure in your tires, knowing the temperature of your tires, is a great way to stay safe. And it's so very important that when you're in an RV, at who knows how many pounds, heading down the road at 65, 70 miles an hour, that the last thing you want is a blown tire. So having a monitoring system could catch a imminent problem from occurring um, and it's just well worth the, the, the money to be able to have that peace of mind while you're going down the road. Yeah, so now on the way home we get to find some place to fill up our tires. Yes. <laughs> we, need, <laughs> we need to get them back up to, up to the right pressure. Water and um, electrical extension cord type situations. We have been in parks where the water hookup was like deep in the woods and <laughs> if we just had the standard size we would have wouldn't even come close to being able to hook up so make sure you have those extensions um I don't yeah we've the electric but. well we've had uh i think we have a 50 foot electric extension and a 50 foot water extension and in both cases uh, we've had to use them in the past because Either the electric connection is in between two campsites and it's quite a distance to get to it, and also the water connection because they tend to be near each other. So we have definitely used those in the past, and, and uh, thank goodness we had them because uh, the 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 size of the of a traditional you know 50 foot, even in some cases 100 foot hose, wouldn't have been enough to get us where we needed to get. Um, but the cord, the electrical cord coming off the mo most motor homes, I think are only about 50 feet, maybe less and it just isn't enough in some cases so it's nice to have that have that extra cord and that extra hose. The water pressure regulator is the next one and this is this is such an inexpensive item to protect your coach. Most of the RV parks um, can have trouble regulating their water pressure and if there's a spike in water pressure it can actually damage the, pl the plumbing in your motorhome. Now a lot of a lot of um, like state parks and stuff like that, they they automatically put a pressure regulator on the end of their spigots, and that's really nice. But not every park does that. So having something for yourself to make sure that you don't get a spike in water pressure uh, is absolutely essential to prevent damage. You don't want to get water damage in your RV. Um, I find Tervis tumblers a necessity. They don't sweat, they keep your drink hot or cold, um, they pack away nicely, they're durable. Yeah, they don't make a lot of noise in your cabinets. Right, and that's important. Yeah. So, hooray for the Tarvis. Nice and light, so that's always a benefit. Anything that you can have that's durable and light in an RV, it's definitely worth it. You can put them in the freezer, you can put them in the refrigerator. So Fantastic cups, yeah. The weather radio in the, in the uh, with, with an alert. That is really important if you're out and about and you have all of your internet is basically down. So like all you have is a radio. And at least if you have the weather alert, uh, ours will actually let us know if there's a, an impending storm or a tornado on the way or, or any kind of that. Yeah. It'll, it'll like I mean, alarm you and yeah. wake you up if it's at night. So having some sort of information other than having to get on the internet each time, because once you turn that off, it's off. So having that information available can be very life-saving. Yeah, if you go to sleep at night and a storm comes up, you won't know it till it's too late, but having an alarm system that, uh, you know, it's a benefit of having the RV has wheels, you can always leave and you can always move to a, a safe location. If, if something's going on out there. So, all right, temperature sensors are valuable. It's not only nice to know what the temperature is inside your coach, but also outside your coach. But or most, in your bay. But most of all, exactly, the, down in the bay is, is what's most important. If you're camping in colder weather and you're worried about your water tanks freezing up, it's really nice to know the temperature down in the bay where your water tank is located because if that water tank freezes up and cracks or damages piping, you know, down into underneath the, uh, uh, the motorhome, that would be a huge expense. So this is a fantastic way. There's some that you can actually set alarms 
you know, for temperatures um, to go off if, if it drops below a certain amount. Um, really, really valuable. Gloves. Gloves. Gloves, gloves, gloves. You gotta have gloves. You gotta have gloves for everything in this to do with the RV. Putting the um, the hitch on the tow vehicle to um, empty your sewer. sewer. Yep. Gloves are important. And different types. You know, obviously we're not gonna use rubber gloves to work on yeah, the we, hitch. We have you know leather gloves and so forth to work on different things, and then we have the rubber gloves for you know sanitary purposes to use work. with the yeah the dirty work, the 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 dump station. So nice to have gloves all kinds of gloves okay a toolkit is another one that would be really beneficial now I'm not talking about some guys out there want to bring an entire uh, <laughs> you know professional workshop with them in the RV but there's just not enough space for something like that so just a small basic toolkit to let you do odds and end work if you have something that's so significant that you need a lot of tools you might have to ask yourself should you not take it into the service station maybe to, to do some of that work if it's that involved. Normally with what we do or what we've had to do in the past have been pretty much just simple things, tightening something up, uh, repairing something simple, um, cleaning something that you have to loosen up to take off to clean, um, nothing big. Mm -hmm. So uh, a small tool toolkit with multi-tools is, is a great thing to have around. You may even open wine bottles. Yeah, you can open wine bottles. <laughs> um, water filters, most RVs have a built-in water filtration system and you know that comes with a, a filter. We actually have a two-stage system so we added on a filter in line with the hose coming off the water um, spigot from you know wherever campground you're at and then that filters initially and then it filters a second time in the one that's built into our coach. For us, all it's doing is taking the more expensive filter and reducing extending how much, its yeah, extending its life by using a little less expensive filter that you get, you know, at your big box store or whatever. And there's RV specific filters that, you know, the blue ones that you just um, add on to your, or in line with your hose. And it again, it just extends the life of the more expensive filters, so. Filter your water, you don't know where it's coming from. Nah, it's always you a good idea to filter water. Yep, always a good idea. Walkie-talkie. Yeah. Walkie-talkies are a real important um, thing to have so you can communicate with each other when you're either parking the RV or maybe you're just out and about. Um, we have a backup camera with a microphone, so we don't often need to use walkie-talkies because I can hear Trish calling out directions, plus we have hand signals, and all that works really well. But walkie-talkies can also be useful for other things um, as well. And, and again, we haven't used them a lot. We have cell phones um, that we can use, or again, we have the, uh, the backup system. But there are occasions where walkie-talkies can be very beneficial, especially if you have children and they're running around the park. So it's always nice to have a pair just in case. Lawn chairs. You can't go camping without lounging. Got to have something to sit on. They usually supply picnic tables or something, but there is nothing like a comfy chair sitting by the fire. Yeah, and until you've until you've um, tried to move a picnic table with wasps underneath oh, it, that's fun. You'll really appreciate those lawn chairs. <laughs> Doesn't mean you still won't have to move the table with the wasps underneath, but at least you can relax later. <laughs> Having, having a variety of RV maintenance supplies, and I mean just simple basic things like additional oil for the generator or even for your motor, um, additional water or coolant, um, fuses. Just, yeah, fuses, just various lights. odds and things, lights. Um, I also have distilled water for the batteries. So we bring just a variety of things that will help us in the event that we um, have a maintenance issue. The other day, I just had to fill the water in the batteries because the water had gone below the plates a little bit. So I just added some distilled water to correct that problem. That's nice to be able to do that on your own and not have to always rely on taking it into a service station to have these things taken care of. All right, power plug adapters are very important because just today, you know, we're at a park right now and when I went to use the 50 amp service, then 
it didn't work so I needed to be able to use the 30 amp service and it's on the same pole but on separate circuits. In order to do that you can't use your 50 amp plug in a 30 amp <laughs> you know in a 30 amp plug. So you have to use what's called a dog bone and it and it uh, reduces a 50 amp to a 30 amp or converts a 50 amp plug to a 30 amp plug and then you're good to go. Even in some cases you might even be able to reduce it further from you know down from a 30 even down lower than that but we just have the 50 to 30 and we haven't had any need to use any other type of plug in the past that's been enough um, and most of the parks have been 30 so yeah yeah many of the parks have been 30 so you know you kind of need to have at least a 30 if your coach came came with a 50 amp you need to at least have the 30 as an option because many parks don't have 50 right um, or many sites don't have 50 maybe only certain sites are offering the majority of them are 30 amps. RV vent covers. What I mean by that is that when you store your coach, if you store it outside, bugs love to build houses inside every mm. little tiny Anything. nook and cranny and inevitably they want to build houses inside of where your um, hot exhaust comes out when you're running your propane heater there's certain bugs that like propane and they build you know or live around the, this propane connections so having some kind of a screen or cover to put on or around or in or you know to block that hole while it's being stored is a really great idea to prevent those problems from from coming up and they don't have to be fancy things sometimes sometimes it's just a uh, Cloth. Yeah, cloth or whatever. Just make sure you remove it before you actually turn it on because fire. Yep, yeah, yeah, did that once. <laughs> it fire, got fire. hot real fast and uh, forgot to take that off. But uh, anyway, yeah, when you put them in there, um, it, it really helps. It helps those bugs from. from uh, it prevents those bugs from getting in there and causing some maintenance issues in the in the future. Well, as much as we'd like to pretend we're not clumsy, <laughs> we use our first aid kit. Frequently. <laughs> yeah, and, I, and we're not talking about just the little tiny mini first aid kits. You need to have a full, full-blown first aid kit in your RV because chances are the one time you decide to go boondock and you're out in the middle of nowhere, you're going to get hurt and you will have wished you had something significant, significant enough to be able to take care of a, of a major cut or some other kind of injury. Yeah. Yeah. It's really a, a great idea to have a, a, a solid first aid kit. And keep it updated. Check it. Watch for expiration dates. Um, and just rotate your stock yep. frequently. But those are our, our RV product must-haves. And uh, I hope this gives you a little bit of information. And There's plenty more other things you can oh. have. But there's a difference between wants and Sure, sure. There's a lot of things we didn't include in the list um, that probably are more wants than needs, but I would imagine those of you watching this probably have several items that maybe didn't make our list that you feel are um, the most important to you. And by all means, if you have um, things that didn't make it on our list, share it with us because we'd like to know some of your ideas. Maybe we're missing something in our list. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Join us next time on the Average Camper's Adventures.